across the nation. Overdoses are it's called Addicted in America, and it will look at how opioids... Of addressing the heroin epidemic that is sweeping across this nation. This epidemic does not discriminate. The cause of death was opioid overdose. With regards to the opioid crisis in the context of pain management, this has been a story that's been brewing for a while. There was a move away from what we call a biopsychosocial model of pain and a move towards a pharmaceutical model of pain, which meant treating a lot more people's pain with opioids. That resulted in a lot of problems. And I started to notice that the patients didn't get better. Patients were hospitalized very frequently. The patients weren't very functional and the patients really didn't have that pain relief we were going for. They were still in constant pain. We know that pain is a perception in our brain and it's made up of different components. The emotions that we're feeling at the time, our psychosocial circumstances, all those things can change our perception of pain. Part of why I decided to conduct the virtual reality pain management clinical trial here at uh, Providence Child's Cancer Center was that it took what we know about treating pain and pain medicine and put it into practice. What virtual reality does is it, uh, it hijacks the brain, if you will. It takes your mind off of the pain and shows your mind that it can do something else, brings it to a different world, allows you to have a different experience. So this study was a pilot study, and the design of the study was just to see if there is a trend towards meaningful clinical impact with virtual reality. We looked at a lot of different things in the hardware as well as the software that we evaluated. If we're going to test the technology, we want to test the technology in the best current state, the best graphic uh, resolution. We wanted the most robust experience. The more processing of the brain that we can harness, then the more likely we will be to decrease that patient's pain. That means we want auditory stimulation, so we want some type of music, we want visual stimulation. We also want, if we can, some type of tactile or, or movement sensation. Based off what we saw in the pilot, the potential is there. The potential is there for pain relief, for opioid reduction, uh, and for, for cost savings measures. We did show you know, 30 percent reduction in pain, about 20 percent reduction in opioid utilization, and we did show significant cost savings. About 70 percent of the patients said they would use it again. To summarize, what we looked for in the pilot was the best possible version of virtual reality available for the medical setting. Our model of pain care here is to try and empower the patients so that they understand what's going on with them and that they have some tools that are available to them to help them deal with their pain. I think all of those experiences have really influenced my approach toward pain management and also led me into the idea that maybe virtual reality would be a very helpful tool for a specific subset of patients.